Due to the graphic nature of this podcast, listener discretion is advised. Episodes may include discussion of abuse, murder, sexual assault, and other incidents that some people may find offensive. We'd advise extreme caution for children under 13. Ramani was born in September of 1966 to Kamala and Leslie Bartholomews and was the oldest of five children. Her father, Mark Leslie, was a well-known broadcast journalist and film director. Ramani was described by her sister as imaginative and fun-loving. Growing up in Gampaha, she, being the oldest, would look after her younger siblings and would often tell them stories that would make them travel to the places they loved the most. Her family moved to Zambia for seven years, which was when she first took interest in theatre, starring in school stage dramas at the time. Upon her return to Sri Lanka, she was a student of Holy Cross College, Gampaha, and was described by her teachers to be cheerful, friendly, and helpful towards her peers. At just 16 years old, Ramani was introduced to the silver screen by director Lester James Pieris, a friend of her father's, by making an acting debut in Ugantheya alongside Sri Lankan cinema giant Garmini Fonseca and Richard de Zoysa. Ramani's father was said to be opposed to the idea of his daughter in show business at such a young age, yet supported her career as she showed promise as both an actress and model. As her career progressed, Ramani's strong will and confidence made her relocate to Colombo from Gampaha despite her parents' concerns for her safety. It wasn't long until her star began to shine brighter than ever. Her performance in the stage drama Maka Raksha brought her national recognition. Her performance was said to fill every corner of the stage. She was a fearless performer, brimming with both talent and boldness. In 1985, she was crowned Miss Sri Lanka for Miss Universe and went on to participate in the world pageant in Florida that year. Her simplicity and down-to-earth personality stood out to all that met her and she was soon gracing the cover of every magazine in Colombo. This is when she got the role that made her a household name in Sri Lanka. She starred in a popular teledrama, Bhagya, along with Sri Lanka's very own One Shot One, Ranjan Ramanayaka. Ranjan describes the first time he met Ramani with such fondness. The production company they both worked for sent a van to pick the young actors up from set. Ramani, who was in the back seat upon pickup, was said to have caught his eye. Ranjan is said to have fallen hopelessly in love with Ramani, although she only considered him a friend. Ranjan says that to this day, he never felt love like he felt with her. It was said that during the filming of Arja Thapara Lahila, he was so jealous of the other actor dancing with her that he even tried to convince the director to change his role to the role of her lover. Ramani calmed him down, of course, and asked him to politely not cause a scene. But despite their strong friendship, Ranjan was strictly in the friend zone 
as she was dating another popular actor at the time, Kamal Adarachi. Ramani met Kamal on the set of Hima Kumari and the pair soon hit it off and started dating, much to the dismay of Ranjan, of course. But apparently Ranjan, like the champ he is, let her go as he wanted her to be happy. But the two often kept in touch and worked together. Ramani and Kamal were soon one of the most sought out acting duo and Sri Lanka's most attractive young celebrity couple at the time. She continued as Sri Lanka's young rising star as just a teen with her charming smile and pure talent. It was the evening of June 28, 1987. Ramani, who was dressed immaculate, watched as the clock ticked away the minutes until Kamal arrived. Hours had passed. She was still waiting. Kamal, when he finally did arrive, Ramani was said to be annoyed at his punctuality. And this is when the story gets a little bit more complicated. So there are varied versions of this event. And today we are going to explore all the possible scenarios. So let's start with Kamal's theory. Kamal claimed that when he reached her residence, Ramani was annoyed at his tardiness as he was a couple of hours late. The two got into a fight and Kamal, who had enough of the fight, was insistent on leaving the premises. He was reversing his vehicle to leave the premises when Ramani, who was trying to stop him from leaving, hung on to the vehicle, thinking he would realize she was there and stop. Kamal then heard a huge thud in the midst of reversing. Upon hearing this noise, he gets off the vehicle to check and would then find Ramani lying on the ground with her head injured. He then rushed Ramani to the hospital where she went into immediate surgery and later intensive care. Two days later, on June 30th, sadly, as she was not responding, her family was forced to make the difficult decision of taking her off life support. Ramani Bartholomew's left this world at just 20 years old. But was this an accident like Kamal claims? There are varied versions of this story that claim there is definitely more to the story. Let me move on to the second theory. Ramani and Kamal, who were on their way out, get into a fight inside the vehicle. Ramani, who was trying to get out of the vehicle, got off when the vehicle was still moving, which was when she fell and her head was injured. There was also a theory that she intentionally jumped off, but this was not taken into account as that would be very out of character for Ramani. The most popular theory, however, that circulated through Colombo revolved around a few witness accounts of this incident. Ramani and Kamal get into a fight inside the vehicle. Kamal, in a fit of rage, in an attempt to get her out of the vehicle, pushes her off the vehicle, where she then injures her head and meets her fate. There were also more controversial theories in this case. One witness, who was a neighbour of Ramani's at School Lane Navala, claims that at the time of Kamal's arrival at Ramani's residence, 
he was spotted retrieving a long baton pole from his jeep. Ramani, who lived in a rented apartment at the time, was said to be inside her apartment when the incident took place. The owners of the apartment claimed that they even found blood-stained sheets which they cleaned and washed themselves. Her neighbors claimed that their whole lane was threatened by Kamal's father at the time, who was rich and powerful. They did not give their statements to the police as they feared for their lives. So there was also rumors of a crime scene and cover-up. The Lankan government analyst, after observation, had reported that it was a murder and not an accident, judging by the impact of the head injury. Kamal was arrested in suspicion of her murder, yet was released on bail due to lack of evidence and a supposed corrupt cover-up. It wouldn't be long until Kamalada Rachi found himself back in hot water with two more infamous cases of underage abduction and rape in 1993 and 1997. The infamous Inoka Galage case took center stage in the mid-90s. But that's an episode for another day. Her family and friends throughout the country had lost a bright young star in the making. The country grieved her loss and thousands of fans flocked to her home to say goodbye to the young star laying in a coffin in a wedding dress. To her family, the intense grief was impenetrable. To lose a daughter and a sister that young her death was ruled as an accident, and upon speculation, Kamala Darachi grieved at the loss of his love and explained to media that, quote, On the way from work, I stopped at Brahmani's. I got really late and Brahmani was mad about that. I got into my vehicle and turned the vehicle to go back. She would have hung trying to stop the vehicle. All of a sudden, I heard a huge noise. I stopped the vehicle and I saw her fallen on the ground." Unquote. This was a post from Kamal a couple of years ago on Facebook as he still claims to mourn and think about his lost love. The post says, quote, Even though she is not here today, the love remains unchanged. Can a heart that loved and that felt love harden themselves to kill someone?" Unquote. As for Ranjan Ramanayaka, he still talks about her beauty and his respect for her to this day as he still mourns her loss. Was Ramani the one that got away? 21 years after her death, Ramani Bartholomew's was the cover feature for the first issue of Reel and Track magazine, commemorating her memory. So what do you think happened to Ramani? Was her murder covered up or was it an accident? Murder, She Cried, hosted by Stephanie Herft, is a Paradigm original. It's executive produced by Zeeshan Akram Jabir. Podcast cover art by Randita Philip with production assistance by Rajit Maligaspe. This episode of Murder, She Cried was researched, written, and fact-checked by Stephanie Herft. To hear more from me, follow me at Steffi Herft on Instagram and TikTok.